Okay, I'm going to make a motion to uh, call the meeting to order at 636. Approval of the agenda. Um, there's no changes today, right? No, sir. Okay, can I get a motion, Rob? Motion. Second, Chris. Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Approval of the minutes. Can I get approval of the minutes of June 10th? Um, there's a regular select board meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any changes in it. Oh, that was fine. Nope, motion to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Special select board meeting on June 20th. I didn't see anything there either. Basically, nope. we went into... Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's it for the minutes, right, now. Michael? That's it. Okay, next on the agenda is select board member feedback and concerns. Ready. No, I think I'm pretty good. I think we're putting uh, last. Nothing okay, yet. Nope. Move on from there. I'm going to open it up to the public comment in the audience. You're with the RAC. You're here for the clerk's office, Jim. And you're here with the garage. Okay, now we're going to go to the Zoom. Does anybody on Zoom have anything for open public comment? Not hearing anyone or seeing anyone unmute themselves. We're going to move on to. Recreation master plan. You want to step up here? Uh, I can, yeah. Okay. Sit down. With the and Lisa's joining us virtually. Yeah. You got your stuff or you want? Uh, can I have a copy? No, take my copy. I can share. Oh, it's with my. <laughs> You're unmuted, Lisa. You, yeah, you can't see me though, right? I, my camera seems not to be working. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen I've never seen that symbol before. It's like a camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a com computer. Oh, yeah. camera. I've never seen I've never seen them before either. I must have done something in there. Well, we can still hear you. We're gonna let Emily yeah. take it off, or or is Lisa starting? D don't we have somebody joining from the? Yeah. Have you heard from um, Andrea, Lisa? He was supposed to be joining us. Um, I didn't confirm it today, although we'll send her the agenda. Yeah. Um, okay, so why don't we just, do why don't we give it a little bit of time in case this person comes? Board of Liquor yeah. Controls. That's a good idea. I'm going to check my emails to see if yeah. he's okay. Yeah, this is the company. Yeah. Go ahead. We have an outside consumption limited permit from Killington Restaurants Inc. With respect to their Cooler in the Mountains series, it runs from Saturdays from June 29th through August 31, excluding July 20th, which I believe is the, um, the wine festival. Yes. Um, they're hosted at the K1 Base Lodge. Alcohol will be sold out of the Rowing Brook Umbrella Bar, which is already permitted. However, the area that we are serving in will be expanded past the existing barriers that the Umbrella Bar and surrounding patio have. Fencing will be put up to delineate the DLC area. The last few years, the um, Saturday music was held down at Snow Shed, and now they're moving it back up to K1. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion for the town clerk's office to move forward with um, the resorts. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Same. you. Okay. So board of, well, we're, we'll still give a little bit more here. Set the FY25 tax rate. Um, yes. This is just the municipal tax Just the municipal rate. side. Uh, thank you, Jim. The, uh, I have a memo here to the select board inside of your packets regarding the FY25 tax rate. And, um, so the grand list value for the tax year 2024-2025 to date is $8,154,094.12. Um, that's not real property value. That's, that's just the 1% that's on the grand list. And then, uh, for the, and then in March of 2024, the taxpayers voted for the town to collect $4,842,314 from taxes. Property value inside the TIF district increased um, this year uh, by $523,480 in real value. 
50, 15 percent of which is assigned to the grand list and the remainder to the bonds. Accounting for increment assignments, the tax rate for 2024-2025 is 0.5969. The tax rate predicted or estimated in this year's town report was 0.5925, so we weren't too far off there. And last year's tax rate was 0.5445. So tonight what I'm seeking from the board is a motion to approve the 2024-2025 tax rate of 0.5969. So moved. Yep. I mean we're 0.5 or 0.4 off. Not that we don't know what the grand list is mm -hmm. until they go through it. So nope. um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're still not seeing from that the child care payroll tax payment. You can just hang out with us. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Put me on no, the board. This was child tax payment. <laughs> we have a few. Every day. <laughs> yeah, we have a few things that we have to wrap up before the first of the year. One of the reasons why we threw it on the special <laughs> meeting that happened last week was because uh, we wanted to open it up for discussion before the board made a decision tonight. So just um, a quick rundown of, of what the child care payroll tax requirements are. Um, so starting July 1st, employers have to uh, um, calculate the total payroll for all their employees and 0.44% um, of that has to go to the uh, child care payroll tax payment. Uh, there are two options. Uh, the town can take on the entire 0.44% or they can um, pass on a portion of it to the employer's uh, maximum 0.11% per employer, which is 25% uh, of the total payment. So tonight what, what I'm seeking from the board um, is either a motion to adopt the 0.44% for the whole town to take on or to share that with uh, the employers, employees. And as Chris and I were talking the other day at the special meeting, um, you know the state's going to be coming in a lot more with more of these taxes i believe this is like social security and everything else where the employer pays a share and the employee pays a share so i would make a, a motion to um the town pays the 0.33 and the employee the employee pays 0.11 yeah i think it's important <coughs> as employers say uh, and employees that everyone understands we're sharing this responsibility the state is brought up and why we're carrying the heavy burden of it or the larger burden of it um, I think everyone needs to share in that process so I think get a motion for us to move forward with the town pays to 0.33 and the employees pay 0.11 so moved yeah. all in favor all in favor aye okay we're just moving along yeah we're doing good um the notice of conveyance of the real property that was acquired by the town, that's going to go into executive session because it's still the last closing bit that we got to fill in everybody yep. on for real estate. Is Abby in? Yep. Abby, do you want to do your TIP project construction update? Uh, TIP project, I didn't know I was doing that. No, you weren't. Oh, okay. You've got, you've got oh, okay. the, uh, I was, I was going to see if you were going to run with it. I didn't but. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't see any. Uh, it, we can make this a group effort, but Abby, just to give you a heads up. I have included your public works uh, report in their packet, so we can probably touch on that. Okay, let's touch on that for Abby. Okay, you can go ahead. All right, go. so Abby can go on the public works go, thing. Go. I knew you were here somewhere, and I didn't see the public works on the thing. It's in here? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the last page. It's very, it's very, very last. Okay. Oh, yeah, public works report. So I just I want to first um, introduce you all. I think I saw you all met Kevin just before the meeting, but uh, Kevin Hewitt, he's out there in the audience. Mm -hmm. I can see him. <laughs> Is our new road foreman started today? He's been with Killington for a bit now. Um, so now we're going to be looking for someone to fill his shoes. Um, and introduce him to, to everybody. Congratulations, Kevin. Congratulations. Thank Kevin. you. Condolences. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you
<laughs> We're going to keep them busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the guys, they've been working on Thunder and Brook Road. Um, they're continuing on that. They've replaced three culverts um, between the intersection of River Road and Thunder and uh, Brook Bridge as part of that. Uh, they've started roadside mowing last week, starting with River Road. And uh, Jay came to me last week and, and said he wants to put together a schedule for mowing of where they'll be. So uh, um, hopefully that will be coming to, to, to you all soon so you can see what that might look like. Um, road, road grading is continuing. East Mountain Road is currently the area that they're working on. Um, anticipating another week to a week and a half in that area depending on the weather. So we dealing with the beavers. <laughs> They're very busy. <laughs> so they uh, notch the dams and knock down the dams or rebuilding it that same day. So we're gonna have to look at some traffic um, to kind of to get rid of some of those. Um, Starting July 1st, they can start notching some of the other dams. We got special approvals to start on a few of them early because they were um, jeopardizing some of our roads, um, spe well, specifically River Road, but more, more to come. And the radar signs, Bob is planning to meet with WIT to confirm the locations, and then we can call Big Safe to get those installed. Um, right. They've been working on education and safety training. Most recently, they did a facility compliance and bucket excavator operator safety. Um, Kevin and Bill are going to take part of um, greater operator training on July 2nd. Um, and you know, through these, they've been able to identify some OSHA um, issues and resolve those to, to bring the town garage back into compliance. Um, and earlier today, I guess, you know, tip construction update, we did talk about the water system <laughs> earlier today, and I did uh, sign up for my class three water operator training course, which is happening this fall um, throughout the months of September and October. Um, we have some problematic driveways, really. We have various ones around town that are interfering with the town highways storm, um, storm water systems. Um, there are two specific property owners that I'm trying to reach out to to get them to resolve the, the issue. Um, so we don't have to take additional steps with them. But, um, flood recovery I had a meeting with FEMA on June 12th. They've kind of been silent for about a month, canceling meetings with me. Um, we were finally able to meet with them and see what we can move forward with on our projects. So uh, right now I'm planning to move forward with the string the culvert on East Mountain Road near the intersection with Bear Mountain Road and hopefully get this bit out for completion by October 1st. Um, there's also a paving bit that just went out on Friday. It will appear in the Mountain Times this week. Um, which will be for paving from Route 4 to Bear Mountain Road, leaving the section that will be the culvert replacement. We'll leave that alone. And then pick up again from the ski bridge to the Mountain Road. Um, we also met with the Rutland Regional Planning Commission and talked about the hazard mitigation program. Um, there's about 64 million available uh, for projects and the state there's normally I think it's a 25 percent local match but the state has agreed to cover it so it's a little bit unprecedented um, we're looking at projects that we can submit for that we're looking at a section of river road building that up um, is a part that has been flooding um, and then there might be some areas of town that were affected by the flood but won't necessarily be covered by FEMA so seeing if we can get some of those submitted as well um, and I'm thinking that there's no way they can spend the state can spend 64 million so I'm trying to think ahead to next year too and have a meeting um, Lisa um, and a few others next week to see what else you know do we need to make sure we have the forefront in case there is more funding available next year um, upcoming 
actually, I guess this got finished last week, so let me know if there's anything more that needs to be done. But potholes were filled on West Hill Road. Um, once the guys are finished with Thundering Brook Road, they're going to move to Whitberry Lane and address some drainage issues there. And then they'll assess Alpine Drive for ditch line cohort work that's needed. Um, on Old Coach Road, there's still you know sort of a punch list of items that need to be completed from last fall's project. And then there's stormwater issues on the upper ground portion that we'll be looking at. Great. So Abby, um, the one one of the speeding one one of the radar signs coming down on the right hand side of uh, Killington Road. I think down to what, there's the one up on top, and there's the next one. I don't think it's working. I don't okay. think it's registering. We could take a look at that. And then since we're on this anyway, um, hey Kev, why don't you yep. tell us about you? I mean, we got you here, so we might as well let you talk. <laughs> uh, so I've been with the town for a little over a year and a half now. Uh, worked under Ricky and stuff before. I've been on this mountain with working with the resort in the town now for about a decade altogether. Um, I've been in road construction, dealt with aggregates, the whole nine yards. So I'm really hoping to put all my skills and stuff to use for the town to benefit the town and get us on track with all the roads, especially with Abby's help and all these trainings, making sure that we're all up on everything that we need to be. Um, that's about it. I mean, <laughs> so I, I just know, like during the, the that one big snowstorm that we had, well, we had two towards the end, and the resort was working with the town, and the town was working with the resort because there was so much going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, now that storm was crazy. And, and really you were was. out there working your butt off, and, and and giving help on both sides, helping with the resort yep. and the town. So, so thanks no. a lot for all your help. Oh, no, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Real quick, Abby, this is a great format. I think it's, and I, I applaud you for doing it. It, like, <clears throat> it allows us to address people in the town when they ask questions of when things are getting done or when they're not getting done or what the next plan is. So I really appreciate this. So um, you can keep it up, that'd be great. <laughs> No pressure. Yeah. Maybe like once a month. Yeah, <laughs> monthly, right? Yeah, yeah. monthly. Yeah, monthly would be great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we don't need every time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, for you to give, you know, give us, you know, either myself or Kevin or both of us any feedback on things you want yep. addressed, the things you're hearing. No, it's just it's nice to be able to answer questions to people. And they, <clears throat> you know, they'll pop up, and so they get it any year they'll listen, they'll bring it up. So I think that this is a good. Yeah, I, think should, so I think you. when we do the minutes, Michael, mm -hmm. that this should be attached to the minutes. We can make it happen. Okay. So then if someone's at the post office and they go to read the minutes, yeah, they then they'll see that. the public works report. So, so they can. And if they want to get on it, they get on it. So. Yeah. So, okay. anyway, I applaud you. Great job. <laughs> so, um, Lisa, have you gotten any answer back through your emails? I have not. I'm not really sure what happened. I mean, I'm happy to kind of just sure. walk it through with the select board, or we could certainly reschedule. Well, uh, my next question was going to be, do we need the person to do it, or are we good on our own between you and Emily? So, so excuse me. Uh, I'm happy to kind of, um, you know, just kind of tell the select board the process we went through and where we are. And you know the decision the uh, planning commission and rec commission made, and you know I was hoping that everyone would have an opportunity to meet Andrea. I'm not, she confirmed with us on Friday, so I'm not really sure what happened. Should we cut table only for the we paid for a consultant to yeah. speak to us? That's my only. Yeah. That's my only. So, um, I hate to do this to you. <laughs> <laughs> You had nothing to do today. All yeah, day. I you know, just was actually. You're gonna get out of today. time for the <laughs> seventh game of the NHL Stanley Cup. All right, we're killing up time. You could go up to one of the bars there and watch the game. I, I agree with Chris that we did pay we for a consultant, and we should be, yeah. you know, waiting. somebody just joined. Could we just see if it? That's was Green Mountain National Golf Course. Yeah. No. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, let's let's do it at another. Okay. Another meeting then so maybe she didn't see the email and whatever. 
so. disappointing. I'm not sure what happened. Um, you know, she's been no. extremely highly responsive. So mm -hmm. I'm something could have came up. Yeah. 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 yeah, things happen. So, yeah. um, so the TIP project construction update, then, Michael. We Thanks. we can. Thanks for keeping company. You're Thanks, fine. Emily. You're you were a nice addition. <laughs> um, Move into town. You could take one of our seats. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> I'll stay with the rec. <laughs> um, sure, we can start with water. As everybody can see, Markowski's hard at work uh, between Anthony, oh, no, we'll start with road. Markowski's hard at work between Anthony Way and Route 4. The town meets with them tomorrow to get an update on their schedule. Uh, looking at it, it's probably hard to believe they're going to be done by July 15th. Um, and, and they've kind of admitted to that. So what we've, what we've done is reached out to them to get, get an idea of, of, of what the next month, month and a half will look like. Uh, we don't see, we don't have an expectation of it going, uh, of extending much further past uh, mid-August, but the town will have an update for everybody on that soon. And, and when I say mid-August, I mean what we're doing now is working really hard with Markowski to at least have some lanes open, even if they have to extend their work in, in, into the coming months. Do um, you have anything to add to that? Jim? I mean, we met with them last Tuesday. We were meeting with them like once every two or three, every three weeks. Um, we started doing every week about two weeks ago. Um, July 8th to July 15th is supposed to be the timeline. Um, I'm, I'm going to need to believe that we'll have better answers tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I think that we will have one lane up and one lane down somewhere in this month of July, okay? It's not going to be, so when they're going to come into us and say August or mid-August, there's a lot of side road, or, you know, off the, off the road. So we will come out tomorrow, we'll put it on the website tomorrow, but I, I have a funny feeling that they're going to say like, July 18th or whatever, 15th to the 18th, that they're going to have to work some way to have one lane up, one lane down, mm -hmm. and not with the traffic light or whatever, just up and down while they do all their other work on the side. And, and so fingers crossed, that's what we're going to hear. Yeah, and that's just with us kind of working with them on it because, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of ledge there is what the fact it, of the matter is. So, I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so I mean, today, I mean, it really is what's happening now. It yeah, is yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the pile's going away a lot faster yeah. than I thought in those last couple of days. I mean, um, the way it's explained to us when we go to these meetings, there was a certain amount of ground that was going to be taken away and some of it is going to be dirt fill and some of it was going to be um, blasting rock and they were estimating like 9,800 cubic yards or whatever of rock and X amount of dirt. There was more dirt, there, no there was less That's dirt, dirt <laughs> less dirt but we're around 11,000 to 12,000 cubic yards of rock so that takes a little while mm -hmm. longer. But um, we'll have an update on tomorrow afternoon. I think we'll see too, just kind of looking at it. Like, if I remember correctly, the contract was July 15th to be base pavement. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're working hard. Le weather has not helped them at all. Well, that was and, another thing in the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, but and they picked up Saturdays to get yeah. going with it even further. And then so Friday, I was told they were out working to like six thirty, seven yeah. o'clock. So I think the they're yeah. And we and we might get there. They they've even admitted to us now that they have that road that goes up there. That's at final at, at final yeah, grade. Yeah. Yeah. They they feel a lot more optimistic yeah. about Good. than they did. I think, yeah. When all the rubble was still there. Yeah. <laughs> but we still get we still have some things too. You know. Green Mountain Power getting in there to move the power over and everything yeah, else. Yeah, but that's not going to interfere with... It doesn't, but it's challenging at the same time because the road, they can't do it till the road's there. Right. Yeah. So there's going to be some. Yeah. But I think they're working along in a great progression. So, so we're going to have a more formal update for everybody all After the time. tomorrow. Right? I think After we tomorrow. meet at 11. Mm -hmm. Good. So we meet at 11 tomorrow morning. So we'll put something up on the website tomorrow afternoon by like 2 o'clock. But I really do think that we will have that road open within this month of July. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead. And you have to say, even though we know who you are, the TV I, needs to know. Debbie McLaughlin. Okay. Um, I have a question. I thought I had read something months ago that 
meeting a certain date for this is tied to the TIF funding? No. It's not? Okay. No, not, not this. No. It's not? Okay. We have 10 years to complete the job. I thought, I thought this section there no, was something. No, okay. no, no it's not. There's a, and we have to go through it every two weeks too because there's so many different things, but there's no, there's no deadlines on this first batch that we're doing. Okay, we're I'm not surprised it's taken so long, but yeah. that, that was my concern. Yeah. Um, you know, we got to remember, we were going to do this last fall, and then because of the July 7th rainstorm, we pushed it out to this spring to, to do. So it's really like, I think it was some 90 days or 108 days or whatever. So if they go into like the first week of August, they're really like 115 to 120 days or something like that. So we're, we're good on that. We're not losing any money, believe us, real. Mm -hmm. We're staying on top of that. Okay, okay. All right. Any other questions? Any questions on this from the public? Uh, in, in I guess we can talk about water real quick, yeah. and, but nobody has any questions or road. Um, water is pretty much what, what you can see now. Uh, they, they've moved um, away from doing as much work as they have up up the mountain even though they they're, they are installing pipe up there still but now what's really exciting to see is the uh, pump house being built on um, route four on yeah. route four yeah and they're also working on the wells uh, across the street and soon we're going to start doing um, flow tests on the third well so just to kind of jog everybody's memory there there are actually three wells uh, two of them have been permitted we're working on the third one to be permitted now uh, it's passed all of its um, quality tests we just have to uh, take on some quantity tests now and that that'll be scheduled here in the next few months which we have to work with the state a little bit on how that's going to happen um, but no uh, Casella's uh, on schedule you know, we, we expect the tanks to be installed, you know, what do we say, spring, next yeah. spring. Yep. And um, we expect to go out to bid late July, mid-August on contract four for water. That's right. And that will get us the water line from um, where, where, where you see the path cutting up towards um, <coughs> Snowshed, heading towards Bear on your right. So then there will be a pipe right there that will come. and. We'll be bidding that out, and it's supposed to run all the way down to Ravine Road, but we expect to put it out to bid in August and get some work done this fall on the bid, and hoping to hit by the to the Grand Hotel with the water line at that point, and then on the road for the next set of road up there, we're hoping to go to bid in the winter time mm -hmm. to start doing the road up there in the um, springtime. So that, everything's moving along. Yeah, and, that, and that's a little delayed. It's just because we're working with the state on some updated wetland rules. And uh, so we, we just want to make sure before we start, uh, we've got all of our T's crossed, I's dotted. Yeah. And, um, but everything so. is, everything <clears throat> as far as money-wise and dollars and deadlines, that's, there's no problem there. We, that that TIF thing is, we we started drawing on it, and we have ten years of drawing on it on that, and then some of the um, the bond money that we the, the 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 free money that we have like grants and stuff, we're all working on that to stay in line on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it did fall one of the grants, which I don't think they will. It's still on the developer because it's into the development agreement that they have to put up the money, starting 25, 26 for whatever bond payments are from there. So we're all good on that. Mm -hmm. But I think we should be doing this also, like Abby does. Like, let's just do this once a month, also. Mm -hmm. Just I usually I usually have like a TIF update in yeah, my, in my this manager's way the, report. We could put mm -hmm. if you put it in instead of in the manager's report, mm -hmm. just put it in as a line item TIF project construction update. Mm -hmm. So then when the people see it, then they know oh it's on. And if they want to come in here or on the yeah. on the Zoom, then they can ask their questions okay. instead of finding it in the manager's I'll, report. I'll collab. I think it's I think that's an a great idea. Abby and I were going to meet kind of next week. She's yeah. been here for a while. She's seasoned. Um, I'm going to I'm going to 
creep into a different lane, I think, here soon. Yeah. So I think it's more appropriate probably for, yeah. for her to do. Yeah, okay. okay. So we'll do that, but then that way at least the public will see that it's on the schedule and they can come in if they have questions. All right. Okay. So um, any questions on any of that from the Zoom? Seeing none. Everybody else is okay? Okay, so um, we got department reports. Why don't we first jump since we got Green Mountain National Golf Course here. We got Green Mountain National Golf Course paperwork. Yeah, we're lucky. We got Justin and uh, David here, I think. So you, uh, you guys have the comparative reports. Um, I hope they're, I think they were forwarded to you last week. So if you can just, if the board has any questions for you there, or if you guys have any talking points about that or any other uh, general financing, financials for the golf course, take it away. Hey, Michael, David here. Hey, David. How you doing? Good. I, I thought I'd just start off with a little recap in May, if that's okay, or do you want me to go just stick directly to the financials? No, I think you could, you do what you got to do there, David. Give us a little, how's it going? It's going well. I mean, uh, start off uh, golf course condition. I mean, we opened May 3rd, uh, so we almost had a full month, pretty close to it. And uh, starting with golf course condition, Robin and his team, uh, he's finally got a full, uh, or close to a full group of, of help. Uh, so that's making a huge difference, but uh, turf quality is excellent. Uh, Greens are very healthy. The rest of the golf course is playing very well. Nothing but compliments there. So uh, I think the golf course is as good, certainly as good as I've seen it uh, in the time I've been there. So that's excellent. I know the board uh, asked about um, operating a, a mixer. We had, uh, I think the last Thursday in May, we had our league night, which is on every Tuesdays. Uh, we had added a mixer to that as well, which was the uh, Pikedale and Killington Town Association. So based on our league night, I think we had around 50 people play and then the mix of folks turned up uh, with about 20 or 25 folks. We had some live music. So that went off really, really well. Uh, that's sort of a, a recap of, 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 June, of, of May in terms of player, uh, in terms of the golf course. Player numbers uh, for May, we did, I think 16,000, uh, 1,600, 1618 rounds, so 1,618 rounds in May, which was a little up on last year at uh, 1,530 rounds. So the round count with, from May was strong. And uh, we had a good participation in, in membership or season pass rollout. We're a little under where we were last year, but still healthy at 100 and 113 people across all categories for our membership. Um, so in terms of that, uh, that's sort of a, a quick May recap. If anyone has any questions. What's our percentage we're down in terms of pass holders compared to previous year? Uh, well, I'll give you the raw numbers. Last year we had 127 overall categories. This year we're at 113. Uh, but we still can see people come in at this time of year. And I'm, I'm expecting it. If we could get another five to seven passes before the season's out, so we're, we're going to be right around that number. Okay. All right, I, I'm looking here, you're in period 11 on the need season passes, and you budgeted 107,500, and you're at 108,153. Yes. So you might have lost a few, but you did raise the price of the season pass up also. Correct, okay. yes. So revenue's ahead. Revenue's Revenue. ahead. Yeah, head counts okay. down. Head counts down. Um, Some price sensitivity. The green fees, 589 right now, period 11. You're only like $110,000 off and you have all the month of June to, to, to do that. So, I mean, you normally would do over 120 grand in June anyway, right, Dave? Correct, yeah, we're, um, we're looking strong in June. I pulled some comparatives this morning. Uh, we're currently, if you go date to date, um, we're at two hundred and six thousand dollars in revenue in June. So if that's total uh, through the POS system compared to the same time last year of two hundred eleven thousand, and uh, June this year we have five Saturdays as opposed to June last year where we only had four. Okay, and so that's just that's just a mathematical yeah. thing. But it, 
expect if we have a strong weekend next weekend, we'll be just fine and good. Well, we're only 110 off. We're only looking at a report that ended in May, the last day of May. So, yeah, so you're good there. You know, the one thing that's been popping up to me, and it's in the restaurant, it's not you, David, but like, why do we even carry wine? We have $608 in sales and three hundred, almost $400 in cost. And I looked at last year's full year that ended 23, and we did like $1,300 in sales with almost $1,200 in, 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 in cost. I, I think we're like cracking bottles open and then you don't have enough wine drinkers and you end up have to toss it or whatever. Um, we don't, if I can, uh, when I started there, we did have bottled wine and the, the, once you open a bottle of wine, it, it tends to spoil rather quickly. So we did go away from that. We, we had some wine that had been sitting on the shelf there for I don't know how long. So yeah. we did manage to get rid of that in terms of selling it, not, not pouring it down the sink. And currently, I believe our, our wine sales are in those new uh, 375 mil cans. So we do mm -hmm. offer a wine product, but because it tends not to sell, it, it, it's basically not our market. Our 35 to 50 year old male tends not to drink a lot of wine. We do cater for the folks that do with a, with a canned product, which isn't ideal, but it, it, does, it does offer something for those folks. Okay. And then um, liquor, last year, um, last year we were at 26 grand. Um, our expenses last year on liquor were in the $7,000 range or whatever. We're about 25% what of their a cost compared to sales. And now this year we're like over, I mean, we're almost $10,000 in expenses. And we're around thirty-three thousand dollars and thirty-one thousand dollars in sales. So, um, and then my last part here is the total expenses. Uh, we're at one million sixty-nine, and we budgeted two point nine. One, I mean, one point two nine for that. So we're probably pretty on that, right? We don't really. We're, we're past the really expensive expense time of May, right? June? Uh, yeah, so yeah, there has been some items within the expense sheet that are uh, higher than they were last year. Um, typically, I think you're looking at uh, uh, pesticides for one on the, go on the, on the maintenance side. Maintenance labor uh, is higher due to the fact that we have, actually have close to a full complement. Although yes, it's still under budget, but... Um, yeah. So yeah. those are some of the factors which are contributing yeah. to that, yes. Okay. Yeah. Just so I know what I'm looking at here, this is 11 month compared to a full year? Is that what No, this is 11 month, month compared actual? to, this is actual 11th month? Compare these to the 11th. Okay. This so is you, what was budgeted yeah. and this is what actual is to May because our year ends in June. Yeah. I got you. So the second so and the year fourth year, column. The yeah, second year of the year, second to fourth. Got right. It. And then the, and the third column is the, was the budget. For the full year. Full year. <coughs> yeah. So the next month so we'll get. You don't know what your June run rate was, so you can't. You don't really know where you're going to wind up. Right. right. Yeah, so okay. the next month in July, we'll end up getting the FY number and compare it from there. Okay. But everything, and we just run through it. Everything looks like it's going on. So. Yeah. Um, hey, David. Thanks, this, Justin. This is. Hey, uh, let's uh, do a comparative uh, inventory. Uh, analysis so we can see because again we're looking at the cash accounting so purchases of liquor but let's look at the inventory comparison year over year so we can actually compare a cost of goods number and see exactly what's going on with Jim's question then we can circle back with with Michael and, and the board and, and give them a little bit more info there yeah you might have three thousand dollars worth of liquor sitting on the shelf which would be all right because then it will go into July which right. is your, your yeah, next year. Just to make sure. So as long yeah. as we have an, I don't think we really have an inventory on what's at liquor, okay? And that and that would be good if we can get that, because then that would stop that question. How is our net a hun over a hundred thousand dollars difference? Oh, I, I was gonna bring that up because they're making the payments this year on the bonds. They, this is the first year that they're making the payments on the full bonds. Where does that show? Where is it? So you're looking at the FY24, 
So the long-term debt, okay, so the long-time debt, so far they paid 23986 They still have a small payment, but they paid 29000 there. Then if we go up to the capital expenses, they also have equipment is up $13,000 in, in the budget that wasn't budgeted in at that point. But a year ago we But yeah, then, it's, then you have the total. But the, the budget, when we approved this budget, the net was going to be 81441 for 2024 mm -hmm. and at period 11 they're at 75 so there's six thousand dollars away from hitting it and I'm sure you're gonna go over that six thousand dollars so you'll be greater than eighty one thousand but you know there was a lot of other cost in here Chris that was not I mean there's twenty four there's twenty seven thousand dollars that would have got us up to over a hundred K if we didn't have that thrown over to them. And then I think also we did not, was this, it's the next year's budget that we're not putting the hundred thousand dollars into the capital. That's right. In 2024, we did put the hundred thousand dollars <throat> into the budget. But when I go, <clears throat> when you look this through and you look at your restaurant, as compared to the previous year, is down 18000 Well, the restaurant side, I, I've, I'm looking at that the same way as you. It's like they, their cost is up and their resale isn't up as much. And then you're missing <clears throat> another uh, twenty two. You're missing 50000 in terms of whether your expenses are up higher all the way through. Yeah. As so, compared to a year ago. So it's not the bond payment that's happening with. It's bond it's plus. It's the expenses. Yeah. The expenses are gone, are up significantly versus what we were a year ago. And this I think we started getting into, like with the season passes the last time you were on, David, where it's like, you know, trying to make it a percentage across and trying to learn the inflation that it is. And I don't know if we're doing that so great on the um, the resale side, Chris, with our restaurant side and with some of the other stuff. I yeah, I just I mean we've our expenses are up significantly. Yeah, that's all I'm. <clears throat> you know, as I mean, again, as he pointed out, our wages are up uh, thirty-seven thousand dollars. Right. So. You know, we just have to know it's not going to, at the end of how this is looking as we go into the last month, it's not going to kick out the hundred, another hundred thousand dollars like it did a year ago. No, but then they budgeted only 81. I, I'm not, I'm, what I'm no, looking no, yeah, at, yeah. I'm looking at dollars compared to what we bought. Well, the year before. Years. Yeah. That's all I'm looking for. Right. So at some point, <clears throat> the cow's not going to have another hundred thousand dollars. Right. That's all. So that brings us up to. This, this is tough for me because I don't know why you planned, you know, 100 grand less. So I wasn't part of the planning cycle, so I don't know where that went. So I, I'm abstaining. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. That brings up the next. Like, Justin, you're here. You were here in March, I think, for a meeting. Justin? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then we went through some stuff or whatever, and um, some of the capital stuff or whatever, the capital purchases, where we we kind of approved, Chris, for purchases, mm -hmm. and then said, get back to us for stuff because we can return or, or cancel or whatever. So yeah. wh where are we at? Because we never had any other meeting after that March, middle of March meeting. And, and just a quick update before that, uh, Justin, I've got your grassland invoice here um, for the ground master, 4,500. I think that this has kind of triggered this conversation, along with another yeah. uh, financial services uh, loan application or financing application from Yamaha. Um, so I, I pulled okay. up the March 12th minutes and, and the paperwork, I think it's March 12th, somewhere in there where you came in, Justin, and there is a whole schedule of, and there are things that said future, 
And the, the Yamahas are approved. We, we did approve the Yamaha utility cards. Well, right? this is different, I think. We approved five oh. utility cards. Oh, you did? Okay, that's Yeah, we, we approved that. It's helpful to know. Okay, because the lease was ending. Remember, Chris? It was like, we were, so we were losing two, because when we had the lease on the carts, payments, we had the lease payments on the carts, okay. which now we're holding on to the carts yeah. another year. Remember that. But with that lease came two oh, or three. Oh, we had to give back the we, we had to give the freebies, the utility cards back. Okay. So you asked for five carts, correct, Justin? Yes, yeah, and those were approved and we got financing on those. Did those arrive yet, David? They were supposed to be here within, well, either last week or this week, I guess. They have not yet. That's the one I'm looking at. Okay. That's yeah, they should be here. Okay. They should be here shortly. I have no okay. idea about this here, but let's go to that. Well, that, So the future needs... I'm going to share my screen. Okay. But i got to clean it up a little bit real yeah, quick. Okay. Yeah, so... Well, I just, yeah, so like the the future, when, when it says in there the future needs or whatever, and it says approved, Chris and I and Steve Finneran were underneath the impression that we were told when this stuff is going to come in. And I think I, I saw something because there's yellow, or so the, the UMAX things have like a greenish or whatever, okay, and I believe that's, so that's, it's, it's, a, those are approved or whatever. If you scroll over even more, there's actually payment schedules or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So so that was approved. And what Mark, when he was doing the finance, he was trying to get better idea of what's coming in when, and saying that we only have like a hundred and forty-six thousand dollars in capital. Um, at the time, so if I look at the treasurer's report, um, there's 146,763 that's in restricted funds, and then if I go back to the Green Mountain, there's another sheet here somewhere. So the capital expenses for FY. 24 so far we're at 78,000 and we budgeted a hundred and nineteen thousand dollars and what Mark was afraid of is is that if we took all this stuff in for the future that we only have a hundred and forty six thousand dollars as of today in the budget and we're going to need at least a hundred and nineteen thousand for 2025 again if we don't take anything in. Correct, Justin? Yeah. Correct. Okay. And then we're supposed to put 3% of the revenue in the capital? I mean, that's what we earmark uh, at the yeah. facilities that are, are liquid enough to do so. Right. So the best that we could do is put like $40,000 in. And if we only have 146 and we add another 40, 186, we got $60,000 left over. But now Michael just gave me a grassland for an ER gr grounds master, 4,500, and it's $91,897.21. So we buy this. Well, and, and this was approved. And so this is one of those green marks here, Justin, that says approved. Um, yeah, that that was approved, and I'm using approved in quotations because I know that that's that's debatable at this point with the communication. But that was approved as a capital lease, so it would be it would be eighteen hundred and ninety five dollars a month. Um, so the thought there is not to, to obviously pay that up front. So that would add another uh, twenty two thousand seven hundred forty dollars on a year. Um, from a capital expenditure standpoint, from a, from a capital lease, which would be below the line lease. Okay, can you scroll master. always over to left. the left? Yeah. yeah. And then, so it is the 4500 which is unit price is $86,000, extended price is ninety three, and that's FY24. Okay. But it has, yeah, it says term 60 months. Okay. 
but we have an invoice here that Michael just. Mm -hmm. So when did we, we haven't approved. That was the other thing that we were talking about, Chris, in March, like come to us and we, we wanted did. to know what was leased, what we could lease, what could have ours, and we haven't gotten no, anything. No, we have not gotten anything. So what's this invoice here now? For can, that 45. Can you, uh, Justin, 45 can you explain to them about the ground master mower? Yeah, so that's a rough mower, um, and that would be replaced, well not replacing, but uh, the two rough mowers we have now are uh, 14 and 16 years old, about 4,000 hours on them, so we, we typically scrap, you know, start scrapping rough mowers at about 3,500 hours, so those are to the point now where they're probably start requiring some, some investment to keep them operational. Um, but again, that that invoice is is, or I mean, if you want to pay it outright, which well, we you know, can't, we can't, because we, we, we right. won't have any money next year to pay no, the rest of the other leases. Yeah, this is right. So it it would be a capital lease, and it would be, you know, at, at a at a standard eight percent rate, it would be you know eighteen hundred a month. And then at the end of the lease, we would own that item. Um, it would be ours as opposed to a fair market value. And that's so, a five-year lease, right? Sixty months. Right, five-year lease. And the last, and this would last like the ten years or whatever, like the other ones were lasting fourteen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we borrowing money at? But this Less is what. We, but this is what we asked for. You and oh, I asked, so and this is what held this up, and this is why maybe is this machine here. Yeah, that got delivered two weeks ago. Okay, so it's here. So, but we've been, Chris and I have been waiting for, because we had said that like 8%, we could probably borrow it 5%. Right, so that's we'll, why we don't have financing on that yet. Uh, uh, and I had spoke to Michael and just asked if, if you know, we wanted to look into the financing that on buy. your end or if we want to do it. Was Someone that? in the audience was asking, I think he was no, saying. I just said they just brought it. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. So, I guess my question would be is, you know, when Jim and I were discussing this prior to, and Mark was still involved with us and we had all these numbers projected out, to me, it would, where we have a lot better borrowing power for us to go out and obtain a note that was a revolving note where, in fact, we could put pieces like this on here and pay a hell of a lot less than 8% interest and save a lot of money. This is why we're asking for this type of stuff before because it's, you know, and we never knew when the equipment's going to show up. We'd sat here and would wait and wait and well, wait. We were told that we can yeah, cancel. The tractor if we shows to. up one day and then the bucket shows up from four months later. Well, that's the town. Huh? That was the town side or was that the golf course? <laughs> no, it was the golf. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't was. their fault. It was John yeah. Deere wasn't delivered. Yeah. So to me, I just think that we would, you know, we could save a lot of interest. I mean, you know, we're looking here at, you know, and my bigger, my we're looking at sixty five hundred dollars in interest probably. Yeah. My bigger concern is is that we have one hundred and forty six thousand dollars for capital. If you add eighteen hundred dollars a month, okay, you have another twenty thousand dollars there, and we already know that we're going to probably have like a hundred and with that we'll have one hundred and forty thousand dollars worth the capital spending next year. And we're gonna have zeroed out our capital budget. So like, did we get in the real master 5410? The one right underneath it? No, that that that's not that won't be delivered to November, Jim. Yeah but that so so that's a ninety thousand dollar machine but extended price says 196,000. Oh, oh, that's that's over the payments or whatever. No, there're two of them. There's two, two of them. them. So now all of a sudden that's 109, that's $200,000. And if we're going to use the 8% interest over how many months is that one? There's no months on. There's no terms on that one. That that that'd be the 60 months as well. Okay. So if if one $90,000 machine is costing us 1800, then two is costing us at least 4000 That's another $48,000 a year. And we're going to be in negative 
numbers for the capital. And we didn't budget because Chris and I, any of this stuff that says 2022 and then come in at 2024, like those two items there, it says ordered 2022. That's the stuff that we were told that we could decide later on to cancel it or not cancel it, Chris. The stuff that we're looking yeah, at right now. Right. Okay. Oh. And yes, we were, we're not given that they opportunity. They wouldn't even commit to a price. They wouldn't even commit to a price or a or a delivery time. Yeah. So you know, it's kind of I guess shame on me because status was approved. But it was approved so, with. It was, it was approved with. And Justin, you weren't here, and David, you are not part. You're not part of this side here. This was Mark, and this was with the. Um, who is it? Chet. I think. Chet, Mark, Chet, and then whoever else on the ordering of the equipment. Do so we, I guess I'd go back. Do we need two fairway mowers? All the equipment that we ordered, we need. Now, can we live by and you know piece together what we have and get the job done? Probably. Okay. The problem with this equipment is it's a two-year lead time. So we don't have to accept this equipment. No, and even the rough mower that was delivered two weeks ago, I can move that. I can use that at a different property in our portfolio and unburden the club uh, from the, the payments. My concern is if one of the rough mowers fails, or it become become upside down on it and continue to have to put money in it to fix it, you know, we'd have to hope to get lucky with a loaner because, you know, again, we'd be two years out uh, just with the supply chain issues post COVID in this in this golf course of the equipment world is just I agree cool. with That's you. I agree with you on that. What I'm looking so, you know, if we need a rough mower, we need to be there, then that's where we need to be going. I think I think Do we, we need well two. Do we need two fairway mowers? Can we buy one now and you know keep the better of the two we have or the equipment they're replacing and look to cycle it in later versus taking a $200,000 hit? Probably in the short term, yes. We, we, could, we, could, we could, like I said, get through with some of these pieces. I don't know how long they would last, um, but we could do that if one fails it, it would hurt the operation just to have one yep. one rough mower uh, or one, excuse me one fairway mower uh, right. but you know we could we could get it done um, but from from an, from a budget standpoint you know when when I budget the golf course you know we're looking at 273,000 in, in fiscal year 2425 of EBITDA and you know below the line when we look at our capital schedule of 140,000 then a net cash budget of 125,000 profit. So, it, it, I mean, that that's the way we budgeted it. So, I mean, the golf course is gonna be able to, to carry that burden um, and still have a, a net cash if we hit our budget. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm, more, I'm more concerned of that in March we said, come back to us because we might be able to finance it better through the town. And are we going to be able to finance a machine now that's two weeks old in the town being used? Okay, or are we stuck at 8%? And then I just want, Justin, what I really want to see is what it's going to cost us and then balance it out for the next five years of some other stuff, payments of capital disappearing, just like the golf carts disappeared and hopefully they last a little bit longer than what the lease was, okay? And then that something else is gonna move off the capital, right? In the next two years, something else will move will move out of the payment schedule. Yeah, what and then something else can dies come in. Off of it. You know? Yeah. And if you look at that so I mean I forwarded this this schedule in April. If you look at that schedule, you know, we have some some heavy burden years from a capital well and op, there's operating leases in there from an equipment standpoint. At peak in you know 25, 26, 26, 27, 27, 28, but then you know 56, 57 thousand of that falls off in 28, 29, and is going to continue to dissipate in in 29, 30, uh, and we're going to have you know four or five, six year old equipment and be in a good a good position. But 
having said that, like I said, if we're not comfortable accepting this equipment, or you know, if you want a little bit more um, insight into into some of these forecasts, I'm happy to do that. And like I said, I'm happy to to move this equipment uh, should we want to, you know, pivot to a different um, a different plan. So you know, this is I, I by think, no means. Yeah. Uh, I think Justin, let's stop talking about pivoting it somewhere. We're just asking for an explanation of, so if you scroll all the way over that bottom, no, the bottom line there, so where it says 15,320 for 23, 24, do you see that? Mm -hmm. Justin, are we sharing this? Yeah. Yeah, the 51302, Jim? The, right, 23, 24. It says fifteen thousand three hundred twenty dollars and one cent. Is that to be the balance in the account after all these lease payments in the capital? Thought that's what. Or is that the total payments? Mm -hmm. So there's eighty-seven thousand dollars up above on what was what was already what's already <coughs> out there, correct? Line S. So I think they run. I think they run. So the like the HD utility card here, pick it up, start payment. And yeah, but so you see where the loader attachment is, Justin, and oh, the yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the see. bunker yep. rake, and everything. Yep. And then there's a total of eighty-seven thousand six forty-one oh one. That's yeah. the total for that for this year, twenty-three twenty-four, for the total payments of all the lease stuff above that. And then Correct. there's the other items that were like ordered or delivered, you know, for the 2024 delivery. So there's another fifteen thousand dollars there. Yeah. But, but if that, but if that eighty thousand dollars machine is in there, it's telling me that the payment for the eighty-six thousand at eight percent is four thousand one hundred twenty-four dollars and twenty-five cents. But I thought you just told me it was eighteen hundred dollars a month. That, that's for the full year payment. What's for the full year? What line are you on, Jim? I'm an ass, I believe. Sorry. But, it's um, tough for us to see. It's yeah, tough yeah, to see. It, well, it's a long spreadsheet here. Um, I'm line looking item for future, about? future needs. Line item. Future needs 2024. Okay. Let's go to the Groundmaster 4500. Got it. Now let's scroll yep. over to the payments. It says. Four thousand one hundred twenty-four dollars and twenty-five cents on line item S in the Excel spreadsheet. But then, right. then the next year is twenty-four thousand. So they're just. But I thought it was eighteen. Really but I thought it was eighteen hundred dollars a month. It is, but probably that's assuming it wasn't going to be. This is all assumptions of when it's going to be okay. delivered. So that's all we need to know, Justin. Is like an update. It's 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 June. We got it in. We owe a payment in June and July, August, September, October, November, December. We're going to have six payments instead of two, or whatever the forty-two hundred. Right, right. But that's so you see what I'm saying there, Justin? There's a forty-one hundred dollar payment for twenty-three twenty-four. Yeah, and twenty-three twenty-four. That's because yeah, that would be on the fiscal the fiscal expense for May and June. Okay. And then the next, but the next fiscal year would be for tw for twelve yeah. month payment. Okay. So next, so the next, <clears throat> so that's what's. Yeah. So it's assuming we were going to get two payments in this fiscal year. So May and June. May and June. So now, if I go into the twenty twenty four twenty five, stay where you are. All right. Okay. And I look up above that for because this is underneath future needs, but I look above. It's telling me fifty eight thousand two eight eight twenty nine forty four. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's, all, the that, yeah. that's the current, and then the yep. future is one oh for next year. The extra stuff coming in is that one oh three 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 one point six one. That's what we're going to spend. Yeah. Total. That would. Of the well, that would be that would be if we if we ordered the additional three pieces as well. The, the right. Rough mower trim, the triplex screens, which those greens mowers we're not getting because we're just going to keep. We talked to. Michael and Mary Ellen about the triplex greens mowers, so we can take those off the list because we're going to keep what we have and buy those out at the end of that lease term. Okay, but and, what I'm uh, getting, what my question is, is that 103 
Is that just for everything in green? Yes. Yes. And the total payment for next year for 24-25 is going to be 103 if we took everything in mm -hmm. plus the 58. So like 161, Correct. 162. Correct. Okay, and I'm just saying that we're probably only going to have about 140 at the end of 2025 and we have to make those payments. Mm -hmm. So if you can get something to us in the next couple of days of taking out some of those payments that you just said and run the same sheet, Justin, with what we know t today. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I just think if we can tighten our belt and maybe not have two fairway right away and maybe kick that down a little bit because we'll start to, you know, some stuff does start to come off of the, the, the uh, capital plan. But my, my larger one is why we're not looking at financing this differently because if you go scroll to the left, Michael, the interest rate we're talking about. Is 8%. Mm -hmm. No, 2027, we're talking a 12% interest rate. Right. Yeah. In 16 after that. I'm so that's what the board, Justin, before you came back on to the golf course area down there, that's, that's what the board was asking for with Chet and Mark, okay? We were asking to go to the banks here and see what better interest rate we can. And then that will change your schedule of how much money and, and what is left at the end. So if you could just work that out the next couple of days or whatever with Michael and, and Mary Ellen and get us something that we can look at that makes sense instead of, like you just told us some of those things you wouldn't be doing but I'm looking at a sheet showing me we are. And then no problem. And, and that, those percentages are just forecast multipliers. They're okay. not. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. It's just it's just an assumption on you know those prices are going to go up here in the next you know, yeah. two, three, four years. Yeah. So. I got that. Yeah. But um, but sure, no problem. It would just look at the you know. Is it possible to get away without two fairway mowers, and that would get us back in line with our budget? We just I don't know about that. Huh? I don't know about that. Well, it should. I mean, no, the go down further. Go out. down further. I think somewhere in here is irrigation, then too, or is that in here? Or is the irrigation down further, Justin? Where's the irrigation system? I, I remember uh, the irrigation system isn't on this sheet. Yeah. yeah. All right. But there's another. Well, no. What I'm saying, but if you look at 24 or 25, mm -hmm. we could by eliminated cutting down to. A ferry mower kicking that further down the line, we are would be better cash flow situation for what we're setting aside for capital. About twenty two thousand um, dollars, eighteen hundred a month mm -hmm. for an eighty thousand dollar machine or whatever. But but if we got a better interest rate, then interest maybe it'd be too. a little bit better. But we're so looking, looking, but yeah, maybe thirty grand. We're at putting a hundred and fourteen thousand. Uh, is that for the year? No. Oh, that's the price. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not looking at So that's that. why I was going down to the bottom and saying how much yeah. money are we... I mean, it's total. total. What's, what's the goal? Is that how this works? Are they, are they giving a capital expenditure goal to work within? Or we were kind of off on that with Mark. We never really had a good... Cat. Mark would be all over the place with the shell game. Uh, it, was, it was also prior to Justin coming back. It was. And, and, we, and, and COVID, because we were told, we don't know what the price is. We were agreeing to things. We, we don't know when we're going to get them. Justin, okay. you're going to be here uh, at our next meeting, right? July 8th? Uh, we wouldn't do it this way. Uh, is that, it's July 8th, the right day. You're coming down to see me I'm, in July. I'm definitely coming in July. I'm going to try to make the 8th. It's either going to be the second or third week in July, for sure. Okay. All right. So if so, uh, you know there is some hesitancy internally about some of these purchases. It makes me feel a little better now that that we have a little bit of time because what you're saying is even though that you do have the Groundmaster 4500, it, if we run the numbers and it just doesn't work, it's something that you can move to a different location. It's so an they, option. It's an option. Not, and um, we'll um, yeah. If we don't <laughs> want the equipment, we will not keep it. Yeah. And I know that you don't. Yeah, we can move it, Michael, if we have to, for sure. Okay. okay. It, is there a like a top, middle, bottom projection for twenty four, twenty five? Uh, so, 
um, do you have planning for next year laid out already? That's what I'm trying to get. Like, can you give us, Justin, just run with what you have and then mm -hmm. take away the ones at the bottom that you said that we weren't going to get, that they shouldn't have been on there, okay? And then do for Chris and I, do two and then do one of the other cut, okay? And show it to us. But get along with Michael here at the town of what could we get from like community bank or whatever for an interest loan on something like this. And then we can plug those interest rate numbers in and have them more up to date. But I'm really concerned about two years out. You know, we got one year that we didn't put 100K in from the town. We may have to. Mm -hmm. I think we need to. We, we, need a, we need a document showing us better than, this was done a while ago. So let's like can it. And, and Justin, I guess, and for the board as well, I guess it would be hard to, to seek formal approval on some of these assets because you don't know when it's going to show up, right? Did, did they just call you and say it's coming price. next week or what? Yeah, it's, that's exactly what they do, Michael. Yes. It's an it's a 18 to 24 month lead time on most of these pieces. And you don't know you're, you're getting them until two, three weeks, sometimes a week before. And you don't know the price either, correct? Don't know the price until the official drop, correct? Yeah. But that's, it's, what it's, we, that's what we were yeah. told two years ago, 18 to 24 months ago. But we were also told, Justin, that we would get a heads up and find out that two weeks ago a machine is there. We didn't get the heads up. And I'm not leaning to sending it back if we really need it, okay? I, I just sure. want to make sure that our cash flow is set right and that we make the right adjustments. Well, we should we should be definitely financing this somehow. Yeah, yeah. And and Justin, I'm getting my feet under me now. I, I'm feeling that way any anyway. And um, you know, it, although we don't know when it's going to show up, I think we we may have the opportunity to revisit this every fiscal year at some time and say, you know, before our budget and say, this is what our this is what's in line for our capital purchase in 2024. Uh, do we think it's still a good move? So we can yeah, maybe strategize Michael, this, that. This, is, this particular situation is never going to happen again. Not, not, not when I'm here. Good. Thank you. Because sure. if, <laughs> if it's an 18 to 24 a month, we should be revisiting every six months. Plenty of planning. Okay, it's 12 to 18 months. Six to 12 months. That's all. So yeah, absolutely. Do, do you guys know what you got to do? Yeah, Justin, I'm on vacation next week, but I'm committed to working an hour every day. I've told too many people that, so I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hours. Hours. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, scared, I'm scared everybody thinks they get one hour. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, as soon He's as up to 12 it, hours. If you send me something, uh, you have my word, it goes straight to Mary, well, CC oh. Mary Ellen for sure. Well, actually, send it to Mary Ellen, address it to her, CC me. And then uh, anything that comes to us, we'll coordinate it and get it to the board. It'll be ready for uh, July 8th if you're here. So I saw Mary Ellen on as Maeve. Mary Ellen, you there? On mute? You there, Mary Ellen? She left. She did. Yes, I am. Okay. So you could work with Justin this week on what we want, correct? You've been listening? Yes, I have. But it remember, it is um, year end close for us. Right. Okay. And, we're, and we're trying to and we're trying to get a lot of money that's been held up from us for quite a while. So keep using so that forty five hundred for the next three or four weeks, Justin, and start putting some numbers together. Then run it through Michael and Mary Ellen next week. Okay, we'll do. Is that enough for golf? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's plenty. Town finances. Thanks a lot, David. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Justin. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, everybody. We'll Thanks. Question I'll make a motion first to approve the Green Mountain National Golf Course Comparative Report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We got the town report, town comparative. You want to give us the clean? 
Yeah, I, I don't really have any updates here for you from last year. Uh, this is for May, and then obviously um, our last re uh, report for fiscal year will be June. That'll really give us a good overview of where we're at and where we're landed. Mary Ellen and I had a meeting with the auditors today. Uh, they should be um, coming. Mary Ellen, did they say August? Did we land on August or October that the auditors were coming uh, to assess FY24? Uh, well, anyway, it's either. Oh, sorry, it, it's August. Okay, August. Oh, that's okay. Um, August is quick. That's good. Yeah. So, well, our goal is to have the audit by yeah. November. Right. Gives us enough time to vet it, get it in the town well. report. Um, so, no, I, I don't have anything particular I need to speak okay. on regarding the comparative budget report. So, make a motion to approve the comparative budget report for May of 2024. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, then we got the treasurer's report, May 31st, 2024. Um, this is what I guess Lucretia and Ken were talking about, mm -hmm. whatever. And so there's three million three hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars in should be in restricted funds. At the end of May, there was two million seventeen thousand, and we know this because of we're spending more money up on East Mountain Road, and we're waiting for the reimbursements. And you are going to work on sometime for the July meeting coming up, the second meeting, to have a better stance of where we ended up at the end of June, mm -hmm. and you have choices that you and Mary Ellen are working on now to pull in some band note money mm -hmm. to make sure that we have enough to go through. Yep. And then the band was voted for to come in and then as the money comes in from FEMA and from, and well, the band, from, from FEMA, let's say, and then from Murkowski mm -hmm. or SRF, mm -hmm. we'll start then paying that band back off yep. and then we'll have our money coming back in and. You know, we're lucky that we have money in the account because how much money are we really spending so far up on route on East Mountain Road from the July 7th? Uh, I'd have to pull Abby's report About report back up. Two? Uh, three? Yeah, I'd say two. I'd so two, two, so two. $2 million, and how much have we gotten back? About six? Yep. Okay, so there's $1.4 million. If we had that $1.4 we would be able to cover the restricted mm -hmm. fund. And then still, how much money in the SRF stuff that Chet, prior to you, was pulling from the general fund that now we're trying to work yeah. back into the general yeah, before fund? We had before we got the ban. Right, before forward. you got the ban. Mm -hmm. So I think you would have the $4 million in this account to cover the restricted fund and then also have the money to run for the month of mm -hmm. June, mm -hmm. okay? And then we should be getting the rest of the money back from FEMA because we had around eight hundred, nine hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. for rainy day funds, mm -hmm. okay? And we should get that back once all FEMA is done. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. But like Mary Ellen said, you guys are doing your year end, and so if we can do like the end of July meeting, mm -hmm. even if it just has to be a special meeting mm -hmm. at the end of July to. Okay. To, to just cover how we got through this. And this is the same thing like Irene was. You had to do like $7 million worth of Irene debt. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, we had to borrow money for it while we were getting money in. And, there, and, there, and just the harsh reality of it is, is that we're not, we're not allowed to pad our budget. So right. at the yeah. end of June, you're, the expectation is that you're close. You're close. close. Yeah. You're close yeah. Yeah. You know? So yeah. we've yeah. just, we've, you know, we've got FEMA. It hit us. Um, you know, we've got a lot of big projects going on, waiting for uh, loans to be you know, opened up mm -hmm. due to permitting. All that's opened up. Now we're starting the process of bringing money in. Right. So, okay. all right. We Motion did not accept the treasurer's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you see that somebody else showed up in the meeting? I did. I saw that. Uh, okay. Uh, the uh, presenter showed up. Okay. Is she still here? I believe so. This is not for I, the. I don't, I don't know if. Uh, Oh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I don't know if Lisa's still here, and we know that 
Yeah, so Lisa's. Lisa's and, and she's gone. She's gone. Yeah, okay. she's gone she's too. Gone. So. Okay. So Lisa might have told her. Okay. Saved us. Golf gets me every time. I got my papers all messed up. Next, 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 uh, I think we're through, actually, but. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah, hey, we're at open public comment. Yeah. So we're back to open public comment. After all that talking, if you still got any questions <laughs> in your head, okay. Everybody here is good. Online, Patrick, Pia, any questions? Hearing none, um, other business? Nope, okay. All good. Thank, Pia. You. Thank you, Pia, all good. Hey, Pia, that, um, that, doll, that doll you gave me was amazing, just to let you know. So it's probably not, the, not the most appropriate oh. thing to say yeah. in the meeting. We can probably catch up, but holy cow. So we're going to go at, at um, 757 and get a motion to go into executive session for labor relation agreements with employees 1VSA 313A1B. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.